thank you very much, Meredith. Kate and I will share the podium tonight, and uh, she is there to um, correct me uh, for my portion of the uh, presentation. Um, but we are just so delighted to be with all of you tonight. I think probably all of us in this room tonight um, have a special feeling, uh, not only for Maine, but um, how important it is to uh, take care of ourselves uh, uh, at times when um, w we wish we had a, more of a robust economy here, uh, but we just have to continue to be dedicated and focused to caring about Maine and being intentional about um, helping uh, stimulate economies, helping to educate uh, as Maine, develop, uh, Maine Community Foundation is. And <clears throat> uh, we just um, come with uh, great hearts and thanks for what you do. I thought back about why would I have been interested in philanthropy. Yes, I was raised in the church, and yes, I know all about my obligations in that regard. Um, but you know, I had this flash. Do you remember the millionaire? And I don't mean how to make a million, but do you remember the millionaire? John Bears for Tipton, there you are. Now, did anyone remember John Bears for Tipton's face? No, because all we saw was his arm. And it had a check in it for a million dollars. And who was his courier? I've forgotten too. <laughs> So obviously we didn't care about the courier, we cared about the fact that this man had made a lot of money and he was just delighted in who this next check was going to be delivered to. So um, it's um, really uh, a, a pleasure for me to think back about um, why would we have integrated this idea of uh, giving intentionally or helping to stimulate cash flow in directions. Uh, uh, where our society needs it or where those things that we value in life need it. Um, and I, I think it's because I grew up in a family of business, an entrepreneur's family, and I knew how it worked. I knew that uh, free enterprise was a very open tool to be creative for whatever you wanted to do. But whatever it is your passion uh, may be, then um, it shows in the product you make, the service that you give, of uh, the particular mission that you state. Uh, it comes alive when um, we have ourselves in it. Um, and I don't mean uh, having boilerplate uh, mission statements or boilerplate um, uh, core values. I'm talking about the peculiar core value that's the one of the six that makes you odd and peculiar and who you are. And that's the one we're after because that's the one where we want to exaggerate and be uh, very uh, intentional about um, living out that value wherever we are. So we've been able to build, we've been able to create wealth with the values we care about, and we've been able to give it away um, in, with, with the values we care about. I'll let Kate tell you more. Thank you, Tom. I think I need, I got the short gene, too. <laughs> well, thanks. <clears throat> I just want to ask one quick question. How many of us here in this room grew up in the 60s? Oh, most of us, most of us, yes. <laughs> so you can all relate to that list that Tom had at the beginning and the sort of historical context that we started our business in. I'd like to back up a little bit and take us back to an earlier time, our, our childhoods. Because I think that our experience of nature, especially as children, shape the value that we give to nature as we are adults. And I wanted to just tell you a little bit about my childhood. It was an unusual childhood in some ways um, because I lived completely surrounded by family um, in many different homes. But I grew up in Manchester, Connecticut in the 50s. Um, my family, a century plus before had started a silk manufacturing business in Manchester, and they became the largest manufacturer of silk in the country. 
They were also a good company. So I learned early on what it was like to be a socially responsible company. They built um, schools, they donated libraries, they built parks, they built good worker housing. Some of my relatives even went into the mills to read aloud to the women who were threading the looms because it was rather boring work. And so I got the idea that um, it was a good thing to be a good citizen in your community and do things for the town as a young person. Nearby, there was lots of open space, so my feeling of being in nature was never hampered by either my parents, who seemed to let me roam everywhere, <laughs> Um, through the woods and the beautiful pasture land and the brooks around. And I used to play outdoors end endlessly. And I could just go and visit my elderly aunts and uh, cousins nearby. I have some advice for you for giving before I pass back to Tom for a little bit on Rambler's Way. Um, I this boiled down to some, some just very important things to me. I, I think many people ask for you for, will ask you for money or do ask you for money, uh, but it's good for you to think about what you really value so that where, where your money goes is where your passion is. So being proactive, not reactive, identifying what you value and giving from your passion. And the part I love best is following your giving while you're living because there has been such pleasure for me having set up the Center for Book Arts to actually be a participant in the workshops, to go to the lectures and see the enthusiasm and to know that that will be carried on. Um, it's, it's kind of amazing not to wait till you're dead. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to... a little bit about our new enterprise which follows along the ideas of nature and thank, thank you Kate you see I'm very lucky to have a partner like Kate and um, I won't uh, but take but two minutes uh, we had the choice of I had the choice of joining a lot of boards and uh, playing golf or doing what I love which is to connect a customer with something they don't have, but that they would like. And to do it the same way, using our values, integrate those and train a new team and a young team. So that's what we have, a very talented young team. We're making everything in America. We make something that is soft and light enough to be worn next to the skin. And our, our giving program is uh, dedicated not uh, to rivers as it was at Tom's, but to open trails, getting people out onto trails. Main Hudson Trail's just done such a fabulous job here, and uh, we're, we're a supporter of them. Uh, we'll just keep right on going, I think, so that when these are pictures of um, some of the garments, uh, they're becoming more stylish and um, uh, pieces to be shown. We'll go ahead. This is a 100% Rambouillet wool um, polo shirt and a color called Poppy, dyed in our natural dye house in Saco. Um, keep going here. Some of the lambs that have been recently born. Uh, we're putting up a barn that was taken down from a nearby community and restored the barn and put it up. Um, oh, these are a couple of books I've written, and we'll move on. And there we are um, with a glorious day uh, out uh, celebrating the opening of the Tom and Kate Chapel footbridge over the Dead River in North Country for uh, Main Hudson Trails. There you are.